viewers and subscribers, welcome again to the coach's desk. Yes, and we have a follow-up story. Uh, we did an interview with the 3X boss, Anthony Witter, um, where he introduced um, tackle ball in Jamaica, which is the same thing as the American football, NFL. And five of his charges have been accepted to the university in America to pursue their career and studies uh, where the, the, the tackle ball is concerned. And we have two youngsters from Monroe College, two youngsters from the Cartridge College, and we have one youngster from Newell High School. So it's indeed a great thing for Jamaica. I know over the years, Jamaican um, turning out scholarships to volleyballers, netballers, basketballers, track and field football, and the American football has now joined. Anthony Witter, congratulations, sir, and welcome again to the coach's desk. Give us a rundown on how things spin out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm really excited for these guys and their progress that they've made. And um, I'm really excited to see what the future holds for them once they um, get up here and they're able to show what their, what their skills can do. Okay, cool. So we have um, Orville Mattis from the Carchet College. He'll be going off to Elmhurst University, that's in Illinois, as well as TJ White from the Carchet, same university he'll be going off to. We have Tijon Hendricks from Monroe College, St. Thomas University in Florida. We have another Monroe College student, Yashawn Malcolm, will be going off to Kaiser University over there in Florida. And Ferran Messam from Newell High will be jetting off on the scholarship to McPherson College. It's a plus for these Jamaicans. They would have now paved the way for youngsters coming up who might have been interested in the American football and did not see a way or, or a pathway to get involved in this. Talk to us about how, how, how this is going to now open doors and windows, um, Anthony. It's, it's going to knock them all down. And the great thing about it is, you know, me growing up as a Jamaican and coming to the U.S. as a 10-year-old, I fell into this game myself. Um, in high school, um, and I know what the game has done for me um, to open up doors and opportunities to allow me to have a, to uh, be able to go on to school and get my bachelor's degree and my master's degree. And now it's time to give back and show those those youth youth in Jamaica that are diligent that if they continue to pursue um, and try to figure out what their what their passion and purpose is, there's wonderful things that can happen. So I'm really, really excited for these guys. Um, and I know that there's more coming right behind them because um, I'm, I'm in communications with some other guys right now that um, have been working and um, some things are under wraps. Wonderful. And, I, and I'm sure that you don't want to open the package right now. You leave that for a later time. Now, Anthony, Mr. EX3 boss, I want you to tell us now, are these youngsters already in the United States? Uh, currently, they're in Jamaica um, because you know, of the whole COVID um, that kind of pushed some things back um, to the 2021. Um, and, and would have actually been playing El Elmers right now if, um, if it wasn't for COVID. So COVID has, has pushed back their season um, to the springtime of, of mm -hmm. 2021. So, Right now, they're actually in Jamaica, um, wrapping some things up, um, you know, working a little bit uh, and just training and developing. And I'm actually going to be down in Jamaica for a week in November to work with them and make sure that they're on point with their, um, with their studies and their, um, their, their training. That's quite interesting, um, Anthony, because you, you, you take your, your hard-earned money you, you, you buy a plane ticket, you come down to Jamaica, you train these guys. I'm sure that you are not 
compensated for what you are doing, but it's a love for the sport and the, the love for getting youths involved in sports and uh, transformation in terms of their life. But exactly, exactly. I, like I said, I realized a while, a few years back, that my purpose wasn't to be the one to make it in the league. I went really, really far with football, um, and I ended up having two knee surgeries. Um, I, one was a tumor that I found in my knee back in college, and I recovered from that, and then uh, I tore my quad tendon um, a few years later. And what I realized is God, God put the... the, the put me in position to be able to impact a, a larger number of people as opposed to just me being the one to go to the league and, and, um, and excel. So he put me in position to learn and develop in the game, learn and develop as a, as a mentor and as a leader. And now I'm able to use those skills to help other people um, and other young people to, to, to help facilitate their dream. So, you're, you're, and, yeah, and, and yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm not compensated. Um, I'm not rich or anything like that. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a health educator here in the States. But um, it's a lot of money that goes, goes into me coming down and, and training them and uh, bringing down equipment and, 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 and um, trying to get people to sponsor different stuff. Um, so it's, it's a tall task, but I know that at the, at the end of the day, it's going to be worth it because... I get to see um, these young people move forward and make something of their lives. And it's going, they're going to end up helping other people in the long run. Definitely, Anthony. But, but how, how challenging is it? Um, challenging is it? Because uh, you have to come down to do some of the training. And I'm sure it's totally different when these youngsters are training on their own as opposed to when the instructor is there. Are, are there any plans in place to, to, to put a structure in, pl in place where, where you get an a, a on-site coach to ensure that these youngsters would have um, be, uh, well, be, be given the, the, the rudiments that they would need to ensure that you don't have to make these trips? I'm sure you feel okay with making the trips, but I'm looking at the, the, the whole uh, back and forth thing in comparison to having someone on the ground. Exactly. And when I come to Jamaica, I try to, to connect with other individuals to, to help them understand what it takes for those guys to be able to, to compete at, at a high level. But what I've also done was because I, you know, I have expertise in, in training and development and I, I, I have my own training program and company, I was able to instill certain rudiments into the mindset of these young guys so they know exactly what i'm looking for and they um you know with the techn technological advances of mm -hmm. these days i'm able to do um certain type of zoom videos with them and and assess their movements and certain things that go. um one of the cool things is i i use a lot of the techn technological aspects uh that we have nowadays to connect the guys and to communicate with them and let them know exactly what i want and, and, and what I see. So I use Zoom um, and, and they, when they're working out and training, I'm able to, to pick up on certain points of, of things that they're doing or not doing correctly. Mm -hmm. Also, I would like to, I, um, when I come down, I try to connect with coaches in Jamaica, mm -hmm. uh, individuals in Jamaica to, to help us um, um, show them uh, what, are, what are the proper training um, techniques. Um, they can get the assistance and the consistency that they need. Right. Um, but one of the cool things is when the guys are here or when they came here, I was really able to work on their mental uh, capacity and the ment mental aspect. So they really are, are like coaches themselves. So not only are they learning the game, they've, they've learned how to, how to develop um, themselves and keep themselves um, on a level that's going to help them to excel. So it's, it's, like I said, it's a tough task, um, but, but um, I, I just remember them going back and realizing that their mindset has changed so much from when they were in Jamaica originally. Um, and even them saying that to me, like their whole outlook on certain things was just totally different with regards to training and, and how they, they handle certain types of situations. So the mentoring aspect has helped a lot.
in in developing them physically and psychologically this this is a big boost to 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 or 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 students being transitioned from high school to university in terms of sports so you have now added another sporting discipline because not everyone is going to make it in track and field like you said the last time we we we, we discussed this not everyone is going to make it in football not everyone is going to make it in volleyball netball and the other sports this now gives some youngsters opportunity to 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 to, to showcase another side of them many of them probably be watching this game they are so in love with the game but a part of the curriculum here in jamaica we don't teach this um sort of game so right. this is this is a a vehicle now to 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 lend the sport some support in jamaica and open right. another another avenue for students who wants to participate in this sport i i know that it's going to grow and and we 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 applaud the work that you're doing, Anthony. It's, 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 it's a great thing from a young man who loves the sport and want to ensure that Jamaicans are impacted through this sport. And it's, it's a positive impact because they are not only playing the sport, but they will be getting an education, which is paramount. Right. And the cool thing about it is it also will bring awareness to the people that are in um, position. Right. Per se. So the principals and the and the superintendents and the government and so on and so forth, they will see that this, um, this is something that could impact so many kids. And the game of football, it, American football, is not just for one, one style of kid or one shape of kid or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's, you, you're talking about big kids, small kids, tall kids, short kids, fat kids, fast kids, kids. <laughs> every kid, fast kids, slow kids. Yeah. So <laughs> it, can, it can impact a whole, a whole dynamic. And so, if we can um, um, create something where this may be um, implemented within the physical education component in the schools, mm -hmm. no, these kids can also be educated on this game and they can start learning the game at an earlier age mm -hmm. and transition even faster. Right. So I would love to see it be um, implemented within the curriculum. So, so what plans do you have uh, for that in terms of, are you going to approach the powers that be at the ministry level or are you going to start an academy, so to speak, to get youngsters involved in this sport? Well, I know currently they're doing um, flag football in Jamaica with the younger population. So that is um, a really good thing. There's a couple of organizations that's doing the flag football component with the younger generation. Um, but they need um, more, more coaching mm -hmm. and they need to, to um, somehow develop, a, um, figure out a way to put it inside of the curriculum. And so the, the way to do this is someone like me be able to get in touch with the administration at, at these schools. Mm -hmm. um, because it's not something that, can, that, can, um, that is very hard to implement because at the flag football level, you don't even need a whole lot of equipment. Right. You just need right. You just need to be able to um to have someone teach the game and to be able to do some research on the game on the game and with the technological advances that we have, that's not very hard. So it, it's something that can that can be easily done when it comes to the flight football perspective and kids can understand the small elements of the game, how to catch the ball, how to do route running and things like that. Mm -hmm. Then when they get to the high school level and they start playing the contact football. Now it can they you can really see what they can do um, at an earlier time. Right, Anthony, we are out of time again. Sorry Lord, that the time Lord. had to be so short yeah. because this is a very very interesting story. And 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 the last time we spoke, we did say that we we're going to talk again, and here we are. And because you said you have some okay. stuff, some more stuff in the in the pipeline, definitely. We want to even con uh, link up with you when you come here in Jamaica to, to, to do some footage on, on some of the stuff that you do to ensure that the people are seeing what this thing is about. You know what I mean? To ensure that awareness is created. So we definitely, right, right. Um, kudos to you, man. It's a great achievement, even for those youngsters and their parents and their family members, well-wishers. It's indeed a big thing. 
thanks again for, for, for stopping by our coaches just to inform us of this great thing. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll catch up with you at another time. Yes, sir. No worries.